In this video, I'm going to give you my five top tips for using operational amplifiers in circuit designs. Operational amplifiers, or op amps as they're normally called, are useful in so many analog circuits from amplifiers to filters, oscillators, integrators, measurement inputs, and a host of other things. But to get the best out of them, you really need to follow a few simple guide lines. So in this video, I'm going to give you my five top tips for using op amps in your circuit designs. First, choose the right op amp. There's a huge number of op amps out there. There's almost anything you want, general purpose, differential supply voltages, single supply, low power, high input impedance, wide bandwidth, low noise, the list goes on. So the first thing to do is to make sure you get the right one for your circuit design. General purpose ones will be ideal for most jobs, but for example, if you want a high speed op amp, you'll need to choose one with a wide bandwidth and high slew rate. The next point is to make sure you use the feedback network and general topology to give you the response you want. The feedback network can be configured to give the right response. Amplifiers with inverting and non-inverting characteristics, low pass filters, high pass filters, integrators and a huge amount more. All of these circuits have their characteristics controlled by the feedback network. And we have details of a good number of these on our website, so you can check them out there. Next, don't try to get too much gain out of an individual stage. Although op amps have a huge level of open loop gain, this is at a frequency of a few hertz, so you need to keep the gains down. Final voltage gains of 10 or 20 are often good, but check the gain bandwidth product with the gain and bandwidth that you need, as this is very important for voltage feedback op amps. To know more, check out the video in the description. Then, make the resistor values sensible. A bit of a vague statement, I know, but so often I've seen people using resistors of half a megohm or more in the feedback. As a rule, I try to keep them below about 100 kilo ohms in the feedback loop and in other positions, say above 100 ohms or so, but dependent upon the requirements of the circuit. But wherever they are, just keep them not too low and not too high. This avoids any loading effects that might occur. Remember, the input impedance of the op-amp chip itself is high, but not infinite. And with low resistor values, other effects may occur. Source impedances of the previous stage and the like need to be considered. And finally, for amplifier circuits, choose whether you want an inverting or non-inverting configuration. Check out the characteristics of each. The non-inverting amplifier has a high input impedance and the gain is calculated from the formula 1 plus R2 over R1. The inverting amplifier has a low input impedance, that of the input resistor, and the gain is equal to R2 divided by R1. Also, the inverting configuration can be used as a summing amplifier, so think what you want before you start designing. So there are my five top tips for using operational amplifiers in your circuit designs. If you need more information, head over to the description area where there are, is more information, links and, and the like. But please don't also forget to like the video, subscribe to our channel and watch more of our videos. Thank you.